Fox continues to collapse as Donald Trump's campaign continues to collapse. This was like the second day in a row where Sean Hannity, while he was doing an interview, his show like literally broke down. So he's interviewing Dave McCormick here, who's running for Senate in Pennsylvania. And then the uh, screen just like starts going blank and flickering. Watch this. If, uh, I've been in your, your great Commonwealth now uh, two weeks in a row. I did have my, uh oh, we did have my cheesesteak uh, uh, when I was there both times. All right, take two, Sean Hannity. Then he calls in uh, South Dakota Governor Christy Nome, who quite literally kills her dogs and brags about it in books. And she goes, I think Donald Trump is so smart for not doing a, another debate. Great move, Donald Trump. Here, play this clip. And I, I admire President Trump for not debating her again. He is recognizing the fact that it is a waste of time, that she is not going to say what she truly believes. She's not going to be truthful with the American people. And he's going to take his argument directly to families and to people that live in this country that are impacted by her policies. He's going to spend his- Take a look at what was going on earlier in the day on Fox. So one of the hosts said, Look, no one really wanted to see a public execution, a public flogging that went on during the debate. Play it. Yeah, I think to your point, well said, the American people are really sick of the gladiating in the middle of the arena where the odds are stacked against someone, where someone got shanked in the rib cage just before. They did not want to see a public execution, a public flogging. They wanted to see policy. And so the sheen and the polished veneer, as we've talked about before, that lasts just the first date. And the reality is that both of those individuals have not a vision at stake, they have experience. They have an actual lived incumbency because try as she might to distance herself from Biden, it was indeed the Harris-Biden administration as she made sure we knew for the last four years. So as Americans were watching that, they knew dang well what would happen under each as commander in chief. And yes, it looked a whole heck of a lot better under Donald Trump. Vote policy, not personality. Yep, and it would have been nice if the ABC presidential debate would have given us more of that. It was more appropriately the DNC debate. More outnumbered. <laughs> okay. Um, and then you have Yu Hewitt going on Fox. He used to be a relatively normal guy, but he's lost all self-respect, apparently. And here he is saying that, you know, maybe fans of the NFL are familiar with the phrase that we're doing a uh, official review right now. And upon further review, it seems like Donald Trump actually won that debate. What are you talking about? Here, play this clip. <laughs> I am not surprised, Martha, and thank you for having me on. I think he knows that he is in the process of winning the debate on Tuesday night, and I want to explain that. Mm -hmm. uh, NFL fans are familiar with the phrase, upon further review, the officials have reversed the call on the field due to overwhelming evidence. Well, upon further review, the American public has decided that debate was rigged. It was absolutely in the tank by ABC and Disney to hurt the former president and to help Kamala Harris. And the way I explain this to people, and it doesn't need much for Juan and I, we we're of this age, but if you're over, if you're under 62, it won't necessarily make sense. In 1972, the Soviets won the gold medal against the American basketball team in the Olympics. But that's only because the officials and the referees insisted that they win. Doug Collins, Jim Brewer, they can tell you the whole story, but it was rigged. And when you go back and look at the deep, deep bias that manifested itself, it was as though lawfare had become media fair. And that Disney, one example, not one question on China, is Disney worried about their theme parks? So only in the extent that the Soviets won in 1972 did Kamala win on Tuesday night. I think Donald Trump is reading internals, reading their polls and realizing the American people are disgusted with ABC, uh, Kamala Harris did not answer one question directly, and they're moving towards him. He's winning. I gotta give some credit to s at least one of the hosts of Fox. Neil Cavuto is actually doing decent coverage. Um, Neil Cavuto had on a GOP pollster who just said, look, Donald Trump can't do another debate because it's just so disastrous. He'll definitely lose if he does another debate and he'll have no chance. Play this clip. Or GOP fundraiser. Noel, if you don't mind, I'd like to begin with you first and the fallout. I mean, you talk to, you know, big donors in the Republican Party. You're well connected to those in the Republican Party. So from a political standpoint, is it better in their mind that Donald Trump not debate again, that 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 performance he had with Kamala Harris was such that it might not be such a good idea. What do you think? Uh, 
a hundred percent on that. Uh, I think a lot of the donors, or at least the ones that I was texting with the night of the debate, uh, were not exactly thrilled about how that debate went down. Um, what I will tell you, I do think it's smart for Donald Trump not to do the debate. I think that that was a good decision with the campaign, and I'll tell you why. Because depending on when that debate will be scheduled, and if he has another repeat performance like he did, I don't know if the campaign can recover that quickly. I don't think they have enough time to recover from that. So you've got to keep in mind we've got 54 days uh, before the election, and if there is another, you know, by the time the debate's set, by the time it happens, you've got to have ads ready. You've got to, you know, be able to respond to anything that would be negative. So I think due to the timing, uh, the debate not doing it, I think was a wise decision. You know, Doug, so I give credit where credit is due, but then you have the other Fox hosts who again, blame the moderators and say that everything was rigged. And it's just so ridiculous what they're um, saying right here. Like here it is again, where, um, you know, one of the hosts on Fox is saying that, oh, it was rigged, it was unfair. Here, play this clip. Now, Tulsi, former President Trump announced today on Truth Social that he will not do another debate against Kamala Harris. What is the thinking behind that decision? Uh, I haven't gotten any kind of insider brief that I can share with you, but for me, if I had to guess, President Trump went into a debate where it was three versus one. It was completely biased. It was the propaganda media that's in the pocket of Kamala Harris and the Democrat elite going up against Donald Trump. It is political theater that they want to use as a means to spread their propaganda. And uh, why, why would he? Why would he walk into that again? I think if he were to do any kind of debate, it would have to be a, com he would have to be guaranteed a completely neutral setting. But, but the thing is, none of these propaganda media media uh, who like to call themselves journalists when they're not, they can't be trusted. And ABC just proved that point. So uh, I, I don't I don't disagree with his decision. I can see why he doesn't uh, why he doesn't want a redo of, of that ambush and attack. Well, so we would have enjoyed watching it. But Tulsi, it's great to see you as always. Thank you so much. <laughs> nice All to right, see you. A Laura. vote for Kamala. And there's actually a clip of Laura Ingram and Tulsi Gabbard right there. I didn't want to give you the reveal of who I was going to show until I showed it. But can we just take a look at the analysis of the debate just so you can see who got the last word in the September 10th, 2024 debate? Donald Trump, more than Kamala Harris, got more of the first word and he got the last word on every single topic. So when Donald Trump whines and says it was rigged and it was so unfair and ABC is stupid, just look at this chart that analyzed every question. That's what it appeared to me. So here was Donald Trump though from that event that he did yesterday in um, in Arizona and just watch him say ABC was stupid. Here, play this clip. Never gonna let that happen. We can't let that happen again. But when they had exit polls 2016 and they said, oh, he's getting killed in the exit polls and I remember NBC and that stupid ABC that did this horrible debate. Those two people should be fired as an anchor. A couple of more years, they'll be fired. And she was nasty. She looked at me with hatred in her eyes. And him, he's a nice guy. I mean, they were told to do it by George Slobodopoulos, who's, who's in the group. Right. Back to Sean Hannity here. So then Sean Hannity has a whole segment devoted to where he says, here are the 25 Kamala Harris lies, but just take a look at this list. They're not lies. Play this clip. Or have I? She also lied and brought up, you know, brought out the hits. Let's bring up Charlottesville. She lied about Trump's role in January 6, lied about fracking, lied about oil, lied about her support for the Minnesota bail fund, lied about Trump's bloodbath comments on the economy, lied about Trump's position on NATO, lied about zero troops serving in combat zones, lied about Trump's role in the Biden-Harris administration and their disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan. How do you blame Donald Trump for that? Lied about gun confiscation. She said it repeatedly. Lied about her support for defunding the police. She said that too. She even lied about being a middle class kid. In reality, she grew up in one of the most prestigious neighborhoods in Montreal, two very affluent uh, parents. She lied about violent crime along with her uh, two supporters at the debate uh, that were masquerading as journalists. No. That's the thing, Fox living in this utter like dystopian, weird right-wing 
American carnage world that they put out there for their people. Anyway, going back to Neil Cavuto, who's the only Fox host yesterday who was actually doing news or at least reporting on facts. Here he calls in that GOP pollster again, who basically has a pretty good assessment of Trump here. Play the clip. Well, if you're talking about RFK and what he said, I don't think he will have a role anymore going forward. If this is what he came out and said that, that he thought that he lost the debate, it wasn't his best debate, and that he may have lost independent votes. That is not the Trump campaign spin. The Trump campaign spin is that basically it was three against one, that the moderators yeah. and uh, Miss Harris were totally against him. They headed out for him and that if he asked everybody at looking at everything that he has, that he's totally came out ahead and he won the debate and why, you know, that she wants another debate because she felt like she lost and he won. That is the Trump spin. Trump never admits anything negative. Trump is always going to say that he came out the winner no matter what the situation came out in. He is the winner right. and this is how, you know, Trump and the Trump campaign spins it. So the sheer fact that somebody is a surrogate and somebody is, you know, kind of part of the Trump campaign campaign cap, meaning RFK Jr. saying that he did not win. I would not look for RFK Jr. to have any role if uh, Donald Trump wins. Yeah, and give him credit as well here with uh, Ducey on Fox. He has to admit that Vice President Kamala Harris's um, rally was filled with thousands of very engaged and excited people. Play this clip. Uh, from just this room, everybody that was here, several thousand, we don't have a count from the fire marshal yet, but several thousand people were all very engaged and they were very excited to get a chance to express themselves and their excitement about how she did at the debate. Got to deal with more you, you a tear, just being utterly ridiculous. Play the clip. Your final thought here before we go. Enormous tidal wave of reaction continues to come in. A debate isn't over in a day. There was an enormous audience, but there's an enormous reaction to the face plant by ABC that's being factored in. It's all working in the favor of the former president because people don't like cheating and they view that debate as cheating. And yes, he did prepare for media bias, but this was on a scale we have never seen before. Every question, every answer, five, six fact checks of Trump, none of Kamala Harris. Weird, she, very weird. She did bring attention to Springfield, <laughs> very weird. Yeah, very, it was uncomfortable um, in that regard, for sure. Uh, thank you both. One, One of the things that Fox was going with is, oh, Vice President Kamala Harris was a mean girl. She was being too mean to him. Here, play this clip. Talking about economies and opportunities and smirking and being the mean girl doesn't help our lives. Yes, that's right. You know, and Harris- Now, in contrast to that coverage, can I just show you what like a guest who is articulate and fact-based looks like, despite the fact that they want to both sides, you know, the issues. Let's just do a comparison here. So this was Pete Buttigieg last night on CNN, who's articulating the fact that Donald Trump, when he was asked whether or not he would veto a national abortion ban, wouldn't answer the question. Play the clip. Uh, but again, uh, the, the point is what's going to happen next. She's been clear what she will do next. And we're also uh, pretty clear, by the way, you know who wasn't clear on what they're going to do next uh, as president? Uh, whenever uh, the going got tough was Donald Trump. He uh, was given the opportunity to say whether he wanted Ukraine to defeat Russia, and he wouldn't say it. He wouldn't say that he wanted Ukraine to win. He was given the opportunity to say if he would veto a national abortion ban. And he didn't say that he would veto it, which to me is a pretty strong indication that he would sign it. Yeah. Pete Buttigieg, thank you so much for your time tonight. Now, on the other hand, here's your coverage coming from Fox. Here's Laura Ingraham saying Americans aren't obsessed with scoring points. Here, play the clip. And they're not obsessed with who scored what points at a debate or the latest celebrity to give an endorsement. Again, what in the world are they talking about? Then you had J.D. Vance go on CNBC and said that America would be the most prosperous country in the world if immigration was actually a path to prosperity. Play this clip. Town, if the path to prosperity was flooding your nation with low wage immigrants, then Springfield, Ohio would be the most prosperous country and the most prosperous city in the world. 
America would be the most prosperous country in the world because Kamala Harris has flooded the country with 25 million legal, legal aliens. What's actually happened is that over the past three and a half years, while we've had this massive influx of illegal labor, what's happened? We've had skyrocketing inflation, lower take-home pay, Americans more dissatisfied with the direction of the country and the economy than they've been in a generation. This is not the path to prosperity, no matter how much a Wall Street bank says that it is. Now yeah, who wants to tell them? America is the most prosperous nation in the world, J.D. Vance. I know in your weirdo world where you believe childless cat ladies are and Haitian migrants are roaming around and whatever ridiculous stuff that you're talking about and poisoning the minds of Americans with this filth, America is the most prosperous nation in the world. You look at the data, you like you care about data or no? And here's Pete Buttigieg on CNN saying, what country does J.D. Vance think is the most prosperous country in the world? Play the clip. Earlier today, I saw that J.D. Vance went on TV and, and said that uh, if uh, immigration were uh, part of uh, how countries become prosperous, then, quote, America would be the most prosperous country in the world, which makes me wonder, uh, what country does J.D. Vance, Vance think is the most prosperous country in the world, since he doesn't think it's America? And also, does he really think that immigration has nothing to do with American prosperity? Uh, most Americans uh, disagree. By the way, most Americans also disagree with Donald Trump's decision to kill the bipartisan border bill that Kamala Harris has pledged that she would sign if it came to her. So. Rather than have us talking about that, he wants us talking about people allegedly eating cats, which is. Yeah, that's so well said right there. Just, even though those last clips weren't Fox, I just had to show you like brain worm Fox and then what else is going on. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe. Let's get to 4 million subscribers together. Thank you. Real quick, Meta just changed their algorithm to suppress political content. Please follow our Instagram at Midas Touch right now as we head towards 400,000 followers so you don't miss a beat.